This is my heat-seeking nerf sentry turret. And this is my freezer which the sentry defends. Step too close to the freezer. But what's so special in the freezer that the sentry turret is protecting? No, not the ice cream the giant bag of meatballs. I've been eating way too many meatballs recently. So much so, I've started to look like one. So like anyone else would do, I made a ceiling-mounted, heat-seeking turret to stop my meatball intake. But before I try to outsmart it and get to my beloved meat spheres, let's go back to the beginning. I started by picking up this Gatling gun dart blaster at my local Wally World and immediately tested its strength in battle. Okay, there you go. What are you gonna use? That? Well, this doesn't seem well, it is fair because my bullets won't want to hit you because you're so cute. It was a complete bloodbath. I neglected to tell her that my darts were only attracted to war and death. Okay, this thing is actually pretty neat, but I wanted to make it shoot a little faster and harder. Right now it's being powered by six AA batteries and shoots just under five darts per second at around 80 feet per second. But after violating the insides and connecting it to a 12 volt power supply, it is so much cooler. This time it fired 30 darts in just under 5 seconds, which is around 6 darts per second at 114 feet per second. Now we're talking. Okay, it's got the firepower now, but it's having a hard time tracking my movements, most likely because it has no way to move. Since it'll be a turret, it needs to be able to sweep side to side and tilt up and down, which is where these conveniently already made parts come in. I first needed to check to make sure my servo could tilt the weight of the blaster without stripping, which it did fine. But then I had the great idea to flip everything around so that it'd be easier to see it pivot. Unfortunately, gravity accelerated my blaster towards the ground at around 9.8 meters per second squared, which proved too much for my super sturdy keyed shaft to handle. Why can I never figure out keying on this channel? I don't understand. Now that the tilting was sufficiently broken, it was time to move on to turret rotation. And now it's time to move off, because that's literally all it does is rotate. So now I need some way for the turret to see me, which is where this little guy comes in, the AMG8833 thermal camera. And it turns out if you write a little bit of code so the camera will tell the motor to turn towards the nearest heat source, nothing will happen. No matter how seductively I wiggled my finger in front of the camera, it just wouldn't bite. I must have accidentally put some attitude into the code because it finally started working, but only when it wanted to. It's actually seeing the light that I'm filming with. And... Oh, it's locked onto you. It can see you. Eventually I beat the attitude out of it using my keyboard and now it works pretty well. Now that it can track me somewhat reliably, it needs a way to shoot me. This servo doesn't have enough power to push down one trigger, let alone both of them. So I did a little surgery to bring the switches that the triggers control out into the cold and lonely world. I then just printed a camshaft with offset lobes so I could toggle both switches with one servo. I finally fixed my keyed shaft and showed my delicious phalanges to the camera for approval, which of course it did. And after soldering this board for 17 hours and assembling all of this garbage together, it was time to enter a lovely phase known as integration hell. It actually started off pretty well with me forgetting to plug in my stepper motor. But besides that, the thermal camera was tracking me very closely and could pick me up from a good distance. I attached the blaster to the whole thing and this is where the fun began. The one thing worse than a problem is an intermittent problem, and for some reason it would track me and then get stuck in a position. The strange part was that it could sweep side to side looking for me just fine. It's looking for me. But as soon as it tried tracking me, it glitched out. And after 3,000 steps of walking back and forth like an idiot, I thought I finally realized the issue. What's happening is it's skipping steps on the motor, but the motor doesn't know that, so I have a max and a min, so it thinks it's moving when it's really not, so now the max and the min angle keeps shortening and shortening every time it skips. This was completely false. <sighs> well, the skipping steps part was true, and I'm blaming that on these. Lazy Susan herself must have built these because they suck and don't rotate smoothly. I oiled Susan up in an attempt to fix my failing project, and at first it seemed like the issue was solved. But I soon realized the stepper motor simply didn't have enough power for this to work correctly, and I'd have to increase the torque using gearing. Before that, though, I wanted to test out the trigger servo to make sure it was working correctly. The only thing that should be moving here is the trigger servo, nothing else. It looked like the servo didn't have enough power to fully depress the switches, but it had just enough power to fully depress me. How do you not have enough power? It turns out when the blaster turned on, it drew way too much current from the power supply and was bugging out the trigger servo. Putting the batteries back in fixed this issue immediately. signs of life. 
With the trigger now working, I installed my freshly printed reduction gear to increase my stepper motor torque, and after reinstalling the blaster, it seemed to avoid me instead of track me. Let's see what our resident gearing expert has to say about that. Oh, right, I put a gear in there so it does it the other way. Since I put a gear in there, my final rotation is opposite my motor's rotation, and after rewriting some code, it could finally track me pretty well. Now there's just one thing left to do before I mount it on the ceiling. When I switched the blaster back to battery power, I lost my power upgrade. I was going to shoot myself with this 3D printed dart as punishment, but it kept clogging and would never fire. Instead, I'm just going to add more batteries and make it even more powerful than before, kicking it up to almost 16 volts. I'd say that works pretty well. With my back looking like I got into a fight with an octopus and lost, I mounted my heat-seeking nerf turret to the ceiling and in doing so overlooked a crucial issue. Now every time I want to change the code, I need to climb up the ladder, plug it in, climb down, start the upload, climb up, and unplug. And you're probably thinking, hey, it was just working when hanging from the table, it should be good to go. You've forgotten one thing. Integration. Hell. Something's not right. Something's not What is this guy shooting at? There's nothing over there. There's nothing over there. Look, a bike? Is that what you like? What is in this corner? What is in this corner, dude? I don't think this is gonna work because of the heat. <laughs> Stop looking over there. There's nothing over there for you. I'm right here, baby. Okay. You stupid piece of garbage. After hours of climbing the ladder and thinking about jumping off from the top, I finally got my sentry gun to track me reliably. My main enemy this entire time was the garage door because it put out a more succulent heat signature than I did. Then my wife had an amazing idea of hanging up the green screen to block the heat from the garage door, and now everything worked perfectly. But is it enough to defend the meatballs from my grimy little hands? Only one way to find out. Hey, I'm just trying to get over there, okay? Is that fine? No. No? Alright, okay, fine. Whatever, alright, I get it, I get it, there's a line. Alright, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The turret is defending the freezer with extreme prejudice. But what happens if I try to hide behind a plexiglass shield? Apparently, old habits die hard. It turns out all you need is a plexiglass shield and those poor little meatballs will be entirely defenseless. Actually, what would be really interesting is if somebody put a real gun